Hello, and this is the first in a set of videos I plan to do on Sage's SData protocol for web services. This is a web service interface that Sage is using to integrate our various applications together, as well as provide a general web service interface to all our applications. Now, for this video, I plan to do a series of these, and I plan to do them in the style of the Khan Academy videos. So if you ever see KhanAcademy.org, I'm a big fan of that, as well as Sal Khan, the person who produces all these videos. So I'm basically using his style of presentation where I'm sort of drawing on the canvas as I talk to sort of um, highlight the various things that I'm talking about. So today's topic is an introduction to SData, and SData is an example of a RESTful web service. Oops, just a sec, I gotta get some color here. Um, let's choose yellow. Um, so this is an example of a RESTful web service. And you'll see this in the literature all over the place. Um, it's a type of web West service that is very popular on the internet. It's basically accounts according to Gartner. Um, about 75% of the web services that are active on the internet today are RESTful web services. So what are these and how did they come about? So that's the first thing we're going to look at. And basically, um, this comes from leveraging what the internet already does. So if you think about it, you enter something in a browser, like here, um, sage.com slash group, which will get us the main page from Sage's website um, on Sage Group. And basically, you type that into your browser. It goes through the internet over to a web server in Sage's um, data center. Oops. So this then is a web server. And that web server then gets the URL. So basically the URL here, what were the parts of it? Well, one part is that it's saying it's HTTP protocol. So that's a protocol um, lets the browser know what to send. And it's getting sent to this server, um, www.sage.com. So the infrastructure of the internet knows what that means, and it knows how to route messages to that web server. So based on that part, this URL goes over to our web server. The web server then looks at the URL, sees that we want the, the web page for group. It then formats the HTML and tells the internet to send that back to the browser. So then you get back a whole bunch of HTML goes back to the browser and hopefully that's a very nice human readable form that you can read, click on links and do all the, the stuff that you need to do. So um, that works really well and in a way you're actually executing a web service to do that. The web service is, you know, take a URL and give back something that's nicely human readable. Now, in the early days of the internet, there are all these great services like um, Google Search and Yahoo Search, and people wanted to programmatically use these services. So they wrote programs that would basically do the same thing. They would send a URL out into the internet, like www.yahoo.com. They would look at the URLs formed by the search pages, and they would basically form a URL the same way as you would form you know, behind the scenes when you type something into a search page. And then basically that would go to the, the web server at Yahoo or Google. It would then do the search and return HTML to you because it wouldn't really know any difference from do, you, know, you sending it from a program to someone typing it in. So then you get back an HTML page with the search results. And this was a good way to sort of do search in the early days of the internet. Now the problem with this though is that Google and Yahoo are always changing their search sites. So they're always being updated. They're always being, um, you know, new features added. They're doing little Google or sorry, little um, doodles and all those sort of things. So what happened a lot of times is you'd had this great program. It would work for a little while and then it would stop working because Google or Yahoo or someone changed their website. And that was all pretty annoying. The other thing that was a bit difficult is HTML is organized for displaying um, beautiful, well laid out web pages, which means there's a lot of information that programs, if they just want the data, don't need, and they have to parse through all this extra formatting stuff to get at the data. So that was kind of inconvenient. So um, this was sort of seen as a deficiency, and people wanted uh, a way of doing web services that were easier for programs to do instead of people. So initially, there were companies like Oracle, Microsoft, and IBM came up with various web service um, standards that then involved a lot of infrastructure to do things. 
And hopefully these worked really well. They're often kind of expensive and complicated to implement. So the people doing websites were sort of looking at this and saying, well, why do we have to use all this complicated infrastructure? Why can't we just leverage the, the infrastructure of the internet that's already there, just like um, we do for URLs and browsers? Why can't it just be that simple? And that's really where the idea of RESTful Web Services came from. And the idea then is that, again, you form a URL, and this could be typed in a browser, or a program could generate this and send it on the internet. And you'll notice that it's working very much the same way that the previous URL worked. We're using the HTTP protocol, so again, leveraging what the internet already does. We're not inventing a new protocol or anything. Um, we address things to the host the same way. So again, we use the routing information or the routing capabilities of the internet to route our packet through to the, the web server. So again, this is sage.com. So this packet will go to the same web server. And now what happens is the web server gets the URL and what it sees is the URL starts with S data. So now it knows that what the person issuing the URL wants back is not an HTML page. What they want back is they want back um, something in a convenient format for a program to process, not something with a lot of formatting that's always changing. So basically what happens then is this URL, it sees it's an sdata request. So on the web server, it routes it to its sdata processor. Its sdata processor then reads the rest of the, the URL. So it sees then that further, this is a URL for Sage ERP. Um, the contract it wants is the native contract of Sage 300, which we'll talk about later. Um, the data set is SAM Inc. Or, or the company database they want looked up. And they basically want the list of customers. So basically, they, the person issuing this URL wants all the customers for the SAM Inc. database returned to them. So the web server then formats that up into a nice XML package and returns it to the, wherever it got issued from using the infrastructure of the internet. So um, basically, this is a very simple way to actually get data in and out of a Sage application. And as we go through these videos, we'll see further how to update and insert records, as well as how to get records, how to get specific records, how to get ranges of records, all the sort of basic operations that you'd want to do with web services. But again, the idea stays fairly simple in that we're just leveraging the infrastructure of the internet to do all of this. And that's the, the, you know, the basic simplicity of, of RESTful Web Services. So there's a whole bunch of other things that you get out of it that we'll talk about in future videos um, because of the way that we are doing things. And just a couple notes, um, you know, IT people might be horrified to see that, you know, to think that I can just enter this URL and, you know, issue it to the right server and I'll get back the list of all the uh, customers or all the employees. Um, of course, this isn't you know, this isn't mentioning that there is security. So like, you know, a lot of URLs, if you actually type this into the browser and you did it, um, you would actually get back a login prompt where you had to enter your security credentials. So we'll talk more about security in a future video. The other thing is, is in a production website, if you're not using sample data, you'd be using the HTTPS protocol, um, which is using secure sockets. And then this is the internet's natural way of doing secure communications which I think is how you'd actually want to be communicating to your ERP or um, CRM package from Sage. Um, but for a lot of demo purposes to keep things simple, we don't get into the actual complexity of that. But of course, we'll have to deal with that at some point. So hopefully this gives you a first introduction to SData and RESTful Web Services. And then in future videos, we'll be expanding and looking at all the various capabilities that we have there, as well as how to use it from client software and such things. 